Good evening and welcome. Today is Monday, October 15th, 2018. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Education. If we could start, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have just uh, convened from executive session. We are finished with executive session for the evening. We did start, if I could just say briefly, a little bit of a new schedule that we're trying out um, for the board as far as um, our executive session and um, hours that we put in here. We met last week in executive session on Wednesday evening in preparation for this week's board meeting and for any other outstanding business that we had to take care of and we just feel that it's more effective for us because sometimes after before or after this meeting we run a very very long night and we feel it just wasn't an a, a effective use of our time so we are trying it's a little bit of a pilot so far I think guys right this week went pretty well right we're good mm -hmm. okay so we're good and then we did just have um, a brief meeting we also tonight did have for the first time we started our board office hours um, board office hours will be um, every evening when we have a regular board meeting from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we ask that you make a appointment with our uh, district clerk, that's Lauren, and um, if you call her, and this, um, this information is on the website, we also did send out an email um, to the, the whole school community to let everyone know that we were doing it. We did have one appointment this evening, and we got some good ideas and feedback and some things to work on. So we, we thank those that came tonight to talk to us, and we encourage everyone in the community to please take advantage of that. There will be two board members um, at every appointment, and that is from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. before the regular board meetings. Okay. Where are we at now? Let's see. Okay. Um, we turn to... We have a presentation to have them do that first. We have a few people that I think want to say a few words for school board recognition. Oh, we including me. Oh, love that. Okay. So PTA okay. and foundation. Okay. And I will say a few. Okay. Words. Okay. We'll start with that. Paul. Go ahead. Okay. So um, next week is is the official school board recognition week um, from New York State, um, but we don't have a meeting next week, so we we are recognizing uh, the hard work of all of our board members this evening. Uh, and and I, I would like to just begin by, by expressing my gratitude you know, to our five board members who put in an enormous amount of time studying issues, looking at policy, and, and working towards improving the quality of our school district. Uh, they have no compensation, and as Michelle pointed out, you know, some of these evenings go rather late. The school district is a complex organization, uh, so I sincerely uh, thank each and every one of them. Um, the governor... Uh, puts out a proclamation um, which I think does a great job of summarizing um, the work of a school board member. And if, if I may just take two minutes and, and read it aloud, and I, then I know we have a few guests that want to say a few words. Uh, from the state of New York, proclamation. Whereas each year school board recogni recognition week is observed by more than 700 school boards in school districts throughout the Empire State, Whereas our state's public education system is designed to meet the educational needs of all children and empower them to become competent, productive contributors of society and an ever-changing world, and whereas members of local school boards are dedicated to children, learning, and community, and devote many hours of service to elementary and secondary public education as they continually strive for improvement excellence and progress in education, recognizing that all children can be successful learners, especially when education is tailored to the individual needs of the child. And whereas local school board members are strong advocates for public education and are responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the public and the public's expectations to the district by working closely with parents, educational professionals, and other community members to create the educational vision we all hold for today's students and those in the future. And whereas the members of the New York State's local school boards respond to the educational needs of the communities they serve 
and help ensure the solid foundation of our school system. In doing so, these leaders help strengthen our state's uh, educational system and improve future prospects for all children. Whereas during October 22nd through 26, special activities and programs will be held in communities across New York State in observance of School Board Recognition Week, and it's fitting to join in acknowledging the commitment and contribution of the members of our local school boards. Uh, now, therefore, I, Andrew Cuomo, Governor of the State of New York, do hereby proclaim October 22nd through 26th School Boards Recognition Week. I thought the Governor did a very nice job of summing up uh, the hard work and important work that, that these five people do. And Michelle, I think our, our PTA and our foundation also would like to say a few words. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for that. It's always a little bit, uh, this board recognition, a little bit awkward for us because none of us do this for any recognition at all. But thank you. We do thank you for that, Carl, and for coming tonight, Regina and Tara. So you want to PTA? So now we're going to go forward um, with comments from the board. Cynthia. Oh, well, um, I would just like to say it was a great weekend with homecoming. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to attend everything, but the parade was lovely. As always, I love the bonfire. That's one of like my favorites. Um, and I was able to attend the soccer game, which I was very happy to see was a really big turnout because I know sometimes it's not as big. So it was a really nice weekend. So I hope everyone enjoyed themselves, was safe, and um, we also had a lot of wins, so that was good, too. I think we did good this weekend. You probably know more, because you <laughs> attended more than I did. No, 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 no. Uh, first, uh, thank, thank you to the PTA and the Foundation for uh, those, those gifts and, and the recognition. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, as Cynthia mentioned, homecoming was this past week. Uh, I think it, it's important to thank everyone who put that together. I think it was great to be around the school and any one of the days between all the signs, the uh, I heard the prep rally was was there was a special event there. So uh, kudos to the custodial staff, Austin, the athletic staff, and uh, and all the students. Uh, it was a great weekend, um, as it always is. And congratulations to our uh, to our court. Uh, and then secondly, I just wanted to for those that were not tuning in last week or didn't get a chance to see last week's. Uh, our last meeting was the workshop. I think there were two really great uh, presentations given that night. So I just want to remind maybe those, if you want to take a look on the website, you could probably find Ellen, uh, Dr. McDonald presented an instructional, instructional technology update um, with some of the funds and proceeds that we received from our SMART uh, school grant. Uh, so that she talked about the robots and some of the 
other t new technology initiatives that are going to be kind of presented throughout the school and used by our students, um, as well as a lab that she set up down downstairs. So kudos uh, to Dr. McDonald for that. Thank you. And then also we had a presentation uh, from our uh, accountant, O'Connor Davies. And I, I just want to, I think it's, it, it was sometimes overlooked, the budget. It's kind of like the most mundane and maybe the boring part of what we do with the board and the finance committee, but it's probably the most important. And I think it, it makes sense to just state again that we came in with, a, with an excellent budget, and, and that's kudos to Lee Lou, to Carl Albano, and to uh, Faith Sparks. I think uh, it, was, it was a great job, and, and we have a, a very healthy fund balance, and I think sometimes that's overlooked, so I just want to make mention of it again. Great. Thank you. Dash? I just want to remind everybody, too, about the upcoming senior class on the house. It is coming up on uh, Friday the 26th from 7 to 9. It's, uh, it's a great way for the seniors to make the prom, and uh, you're listening to the really great event, so please come on out and support them. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted to just take one minute to recognize my, be my fellow board members. Um, it is an enormous amount of time and commitment. And um, it's time away from our families and our work and other things that we could all be doing. So I just want to thank you all because nobody does this unless you truly have the best interests. So um, thank you very much. Um, also, I did attend homecoming uh, Saturday night. It was just really wonderful to see um, a lot of school spirit. And I think when you really can feel that, um, that's just really what it's all about. And I just really did feel like there was a vibe of um, just good spirit and everyone was really enjoying the evening. It was a great fall night and um, so great to see all the kids really enjoying themselves, most importantly, and all the work that goes into it. It's an enormous amount of coordination and work. So for all that did that, um, much appreciation. Um, I did want to say that um, a couple of weeks ago, Pete and I um, attended um, our district-wide safety um, committee. Carl put together a fantastic meeting with um, our district-wide committee, which includes our police chiefs of both Tuckahoe and Eastchester, um, our TTA um, staff members. We had two staff members attend. Um, the PTA was there in their attendance. Um, our uh, fire chief was there and our uh, safety consultant. And it was really a very productive meeting, um, very well organized, and I want to thank Carl for that, and really um, defining um, what needs to be done and what's been um, um, highlighted are as priorities. And um, we will be meeting again quarterly, and we really feel like we're really on top of um, that um, initiative. So I want to thank you that, for that, Carl. Um, one thing that um, I've been working on a little bit, and we've said it, um, if you've noticed, a couple of times at our last meetings when we're hiring staff uh, for our uh, safety, our monitors, we are looking to hire retired police officers. Um, many people do not know that retired police officers are limited by the state of New York on the amount of money they can earn if they work for a school district or if they're working within the same pension system. And so it's capped at $30,000. Um, a year. And in order for us to be competitive and to hire them, we feel that that's really been uh, a challenge for us. So um, this week, um, I will be meeting with our Assemblywoman Amy Pauling, along with Allison Halloran, who's also serving on um, the district-wide committee. And we're just going to ask for her help, because there is a bill um, in the Senate that has passed the Senate and it, it kind of got a little lost in the assembly. So we're going to go to her this week, and we're going to plead to her while we, we need her help and um, ask her to please um, try to advocate that bill through and see what needs to be done to get that through, because we really believe that 
um, the retired police officers are such a benefit. Um, we've been very fortunate to have the ones that we have working in our district, and we'd like to retain them and keep them here, and we don't want them out in a competitive market where they really could be doing other work. So that's something that we're also working on. Um, another big topic, and um, many have been waiting to hear about this for a very long time, we are finally at a very close point of negotiating uh, intermunicipal agreement with the town of East Chester to transfer Siwanoi Boulevard to the district. Um, this is something that we have talked about literally for years, um, but most actively the last two years um, when Carl actually went back to the town and asked them to um, kind of reoffer it to us because the offer had been on the table a couple of years ago and then um, we um, didn't, it didn't go anywhere. So it's really been two years now that it's been back in the works and we are very close to coming to an agreement. So I'm just asking everyone to please pay attention to that topic. We will be talking about it in the next couple of months to come. Um, basically, the agreement is now in the hands of the town. There has to be a CICRA, and in order for us to go forward, um, the CICRA review has to go forward. Uh, the town, I believe, is the lead agent on that, so it's in their hands. Hopefully that can be done the month of November. Then the agreement will come back to us. We will have discussion here um, with the public and hopefully can get that through and start the year next year having acquired Cybernoid Boulevard. I thought it was actually interesting that Tara brings up recess equipment because that is, along with the safety factor, which is just the obvious is a safety factor, um, one thing that we had heard from parents for a very long time is that the kids have nowhere to play in the winter time to be outside. And so let's hope that next winter that's no longer a problem for us and we can move forward with the transfer of Siwanoi. Very much look forward to that. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'll just add a little bit uh, to what Michelle said about safety. Um, first, thank you to our committee members. Uh, I do think it was a, a productive meeting early in the year with the district-wide safety committee. Uh, we did have our security consultant Altaris uh, organization here. Uh, you may recall back in the spring that they did a comprehensive needs assessment of the district. Uh, that is not something that we put out for public consumption uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, it deals with a lot of details about our security measures within the district, but we did provide an overview to the district-wide committee, and what we are doing right now is prioritizing what things can we do immediately to enhance safety in both buildings. Um, you'll hear more about it from our architect. Um, there, are, there are a lot of safety upgrades included in the capital project that will begin this summer. But in the meantime, things like you know more, more camera coverage, which will come out of um, the Smart Schools grant that Rob mentioned earlier, um, and trainings for staff, which we've already increased the number of required trainings for all staff in the district. We have more trainings on the way and a more clearly defined process for every level of safety committee. So there's the district-wide committee, the overarching committee for safety, but then there are building emergency teams uh, and building safety teams. So there are two other uh, layers of committees that are working very diligently uh, to make sure uh, we are keeping everyone safe here in Tuckahoe. Also something that was not expected but, but came out of the meeting was a, a beginning discussion about the possibility of school resource officers. Uh, many districts um, have moved towards this model. It was a model, it's nothing new. It, it's been in place for many decades. Um, but we're, we're seeing, um, as other districts, I'd say uh, a quick poll of superintendents in this area, there probably are 60 or 70 percent of the districts have moved to some type of model with school resource officers in the building. The community um, has given a lot of positive feedback on the police presence in the morning, uh, we do have a police officer here at the middle high school from one hour, seven to eight, and then down at Cottle um, from eight to nine. <clears throat> that has been very well received, and I think it's been very helpful. But we are thinking about an officer potentially in the district all day long, <clears throat> not only for protection, but, but also to develop relationships and teach our students, work with our kids, and develop those relationships. So uh, stay tuned for that as well as we make some progress in our discussions with the town and with our police department. Uh, we, we will uh, keep you informed. I have a few student recognitions that I, I think need to be mentioned. Um, first, at, at the high school, 
Um, our seniors, Miriam Kajosi and, and Joy Wan, have been named commended students in the 2019 National Merit Scholarship Program. Uh, that is a big honor. Uh, we wish them well. Uh, next, Sophia Gizzi and Sabrina Rocco have been recognized as outstanding students of Italian by the Westchester Coalition of Italian American Organizations. That is a wonderful honor. Uh, also, Corey Garcia, Miriam Kajosi, Sidney Nealis, and Haley Pagnata have been accepted into all, uh, all state music program. Their performance will be on November 8th at SUNY Purchase, and we wish them all the best. I know they'll represent uh, our district very well. Um, Isabella uh, Touche um, is a quarter finalist and all section tennis player. I got the, the privilege of seeing her uh, compete up at Edgemont, and she did a fantastic job. Uh, she's quite an athlete uh, and a great role model. Uh, also, Jonathan Berger was uh, uh, received the play of the week last week by the Journal News, and, and that is certainly a great honor. And then um, lastly, I'd like to just say that uh, Samantha Ingram, Olivia O'Keefe, Sam Grimalia, and Nicholas Santucci were all athletes of the month here in our district, great role models, and we congratulate them as well. A couple of updates, uh, just in case the community was not aware, the high school had 80 colleges and universities here on September 27th for our annual college fair. Students got the opportunity to meet uh, different college representatives, uh, and I believe that went very well. Uh, also, uh, our guidance department hosted a, a grade 12 parent night. Uh, a lot of the focus there, of course, was on that, that college uh, process. Um, and on um, grade 9 parents are invited on uh, October 18th also for a guidance presentation. Dropping down to the middle school, um, it is Spirit Week, uh, October 22nd through the 31st. Um, the committee added uh, a new theme this year, um, which is Mix It Up Day and Unity Day. I think Mix It Up Day we've done in the past, but it really is promoting um, students, supporting other students, and, and, and good, uh, you know, good interaction between, between our students. Um, on the 26th is the annual uh, Halloween dance in Haunted House, middle and high school. It's very exciting up here. It's a longstanding tradition, uh, so we invite all of our middle high school students and even the Coddle students for the Haunted House. Uh, they will enjoy it. Um, also, um, there's a book fair happening down at Coddle, uh, all organized and run by the PTA. We thank our PTA. It's a fantastic event that runs through Thursday. Uh, and then, of course, uh, at Coddle, we have a Halloween party on October 19th. Uh, that is always a big hit with our elementary students. I'm sure they will enjoy that. And also on October 25th, it's a Thursday, we have Open House Day for parents both at Coddle School and, and at the middle school. We're not doing the high school. We get, we get minimal turnout there. But for elementary and middle school parents, if you're curious to see what a typical day is, um, for, for your child, you are invited, and, and all that information is posted on the website. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Carl. Okay, um, Lee, anything? Um, as Carl mentioned, we do have our architecture tonight. We'll be giving the board and the community an update on our capital project. We've been moving a lot of that, and we're excited to see where we are in the process right now. And also along those lines, um, we are looking to start up again our facilities committee with board representatives and a few community members. There will be more information on the website as to um, how you can get in touch with us and provide a letter of interest and uh, we will present that to the board and hopefully start that up soon so that we can get uh, in conjunction with the project <coughs> and with the other projects that we have here. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, comments from the PTA? Tara, did you want So the PTA has a couple of things that are coming up relatively soon. This coming Wednesday, actually, in this room, October 17th, there's going to be a student support committee meeting. The student support committee is the new name for SEPTA. It was Special Education PTA. We made a decision last year that we wanted to... Um, be a little bit more inclusive in the supports that we're providing to all students within the district and to ensure that all students have access to all of the activities that PTA and the school district is doing on a general basis. So that meeting will be right here in the library at 730 on October 17th. Uh, Mr. Spatola will be there and our two chairs who are both um, pretty experienced special educators themselves will be giving some presentation and providing some guidance to the parents. 
Um, Carl mentioned October 19th is our Cano Halloween party. We're getting really excited for that. But I think we're close to capacity, but not quite. So um, if there's any families out there who have not yet purchased their tickets, um, please go online and do that. There are also some volunteer slots that we're still looking to fill. Um, our PTA general meeting is going to be on November 8th, and that will be taking place in the Middle High School Auditorium. We're giving um, our general meeting at 7 p.m., and at 7.30, we're going to have a presentation which is called Hidden in Plain Sight. This is a presentation by Lillian Newman of the Maxwell Institute, and it's um, really to show, it's an exhibit, it's an interactive exhibit that will be set up in the auditorium for parents to sort of test their skills and their knowledge to see whether they can go through the room and find different references and paraphernalia that might indicate that teenagers drug or alcohol use. So um, this has been done in a number of districts around to rave reviews, so we're, we're excited for that. Um, and I think the last thing we have coming up soon is a uh, Coddle Talent Show, which is going to be right here in the auditorium of the high school on November 9th. They just had their auditions. I heard they went really well. I heard some of the teachers are playing some stuff. You know. So um, it should be really <laughs> exciting. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Tuckahoe School Foundation, Regina. <laughs> okay, so the Tuckahoe School Foundation or our annual casino night, the invitations were mailed out. You can RSVP online, you can use PayPal, and <coughs> save the date. It's Friday, November 2nd. We'll see everyone there. We're honoring students and child teachers, so it should be exciting to see them. Uh, and <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That is a great time to see Miss Georgie and Miss Orenstein, and they did retire right at the end of last year. And if you did not get a chance to wish them well, it would be wonderful to come out and see them and support them and all the years of their commitment to our district. That would be wonderful. And I think it's a great idea honoring them. Okay. <clears throat> And now, recognition from the audience. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm a bit ill-prepared as I wasn't prepared for the school board recognition, but I would like to say to all of you on behalf of the teachers, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for all of us here right now. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Gray. Okay, and now we have our update from KG&D on our capital project.
of every carpet, um, even a, a color palette. Uh, furniture will be purchased separately, uh, but we've also worked up uh, furniture budgets. This is the interior rendering of the uh, maker space. Uh, it's not intended to be all white, this is just an earlier rendering, and this is that larger uh, classroom. Um, the hallways, remember, has these little alcoves, which are sort of gathering spaces and informal learning areas for the students, and um, that's a proposal for sort of built-in two-person work areas off the corridor. Uh, we've got all the details on the elevation down to each little brick and metal panel. Uh, it now looks like uh, this. Um, and this is what it looked like coming down the street. It'll be a very nice presentation. Uh, this is uh, from the rear. Um, and you, as you do remember, we are putting a security vestibule on the main entrance. This is the floor plan. So you have handicapped access from the left, the ramp up, stairs up from the right, a large secured vestibule with a security office and a transaction window. Um, and then uh, the second set of doors will be secured. So this is uh, really step one in securing your buildings. And we're going to have this at both the middle school and high school. We'll show you in a minute as well. And that's what the security vestibule looks like. I think it will present uh, very nicely at Cottle. And uh, especially if you get to close that street, that would be really nice to have that in the daytime as uh, an additional layer of security would be really really beneficial. Um, as you know, we've gone back and forth on the field, and basically what's now being proposed is a completely grass field uh, with a very gentle pitch. It's all going to be regraded um, and redone, but the decision from the athletic director was really to not put in dirt infields. That gives you the most flexibility of using the field for a variety of purposes and setting up softball or the league diamond in, in many different ways. Um, the, the real need for this field is for three parts of it. It's not going to happen. But this might be more exciting. I apologize for the jumpiness. I'm not quite sure why that happens. But Carl saw this in our office and he made us a few video. So we're now walking up the back entrance stair. It's really mostly an exit stair. This is what it will look like. Going to turn. That's the view to the high school. We couldn't picture the high school through the window, but, uh, and you do walk through doors here, so caution. Uh, but there's you walking down the hall. Um, there's one of the little alcoves, a little porthole window into the classrooms. Uh, drinking fountain with bottle filler. Uh, there's those cool two-person chairs with the accent color behind it. These are the real colors that have been selected at this point. Again, you're going to walk through a door, but. Uh, it doesn't hurt. And there's that uh, classroom with the folding partition. You see the windows to the north. A very pleasant space. We go back across the hall. That's the display window into the maker space. And then we're going to go into the maker space. And you'll see again that nice tall ceiling, the accent wall in the back in the green uh, with the work tables and the uh, different arms. So uh, this is on a laptop, and you can post this video on your website, so you can invite people to walk through part of our elementary school. And uh, I just want to uh, give uh, credit to our whole office, Sarah Dursa is our project architect, very talented interior designer, Susan Davidson, yes, related. Um, and, uh, but most of all, a uh, real, real wizard, a young architect, Ryan Carper, did the uh, video with Carl Mann and then uh, Bob Fendler, who's our project manager. Um, we haven't talked about this before, but this is a partial plan of the front of this building. So the doors on the lower left are the far right set of doors at Tuckahoe Middle School High School. So what we're proposing to do here is actually uh, section those off with glass partitions. So the line running up the left end of the page and across the top will be uh, uh, plate glass partitions. And uh, I know it's a little hard for you to envision in just two dimensions, but think about a high quality shower door with very little hardware that is just pure glass. So it's not going to interfere with the historic material of the lobby. Uh, 
Um, it, it will actually uh, be on little pedestals off the floor, and it will stop below the ceiling. So it won't, uh, it can only touch the tile surfaces with uh, a nice clean metal clips. So it's going to be pretty, it's going to be low glare, uh, probably three eighths inch tempered glass. So very strong uh, and pretty much invisible. But this will allow visitors, instead of just letting them in and please come over to the desk, uh, this will be, they'll be buzzed in, um, they'll go into the secure vestibule, and then on the right side of that lobby, you actually have um, a display case. Um, and that display case is going to be turned into a security window. So we're going to use the tile surround that's there, and we're going to insert the security window that will look like that. So, and then in uh, on the other side of that window, we're creating a little security office. So your security person will no longer be sitting out in the open, um, sort of uh, obstructing the passage of the corridor. So you can have this very crisp, clean-looking glass enclosure with uh, electromagnetic locks, so it'll be very similar to Cottle, and we'll get buzzed in, uh, and then vetted, and then buzzed into the rest of the building. It will not interfere with the exiting from the other uh, two pairs of doors, uh, which will be free-flowing exits, and obviously in the morning you're going to open all the doors, uh, and we'll have uh, people staff the doors. So, uh, we think it's a very low-impact way to deal with the historic building, but it gives you, again, a secure vestibule for middle school, high school, to add to your secure vestibule at um, So, um, the budget is still a work in progress. Uh, actually, just a sort of new news. We're showing it slightly over budget now, about 2.5%. I would say don't be very concerned with that. What we've been working with Leon is a lot of infrastructure work, which is all scalable. So we have X number of uh, you know, locks or uh, floor tile, and we just got these estimates in. And I would still say, before we thought we were 3.5% under to 3.8% under, now we think we're 2.9 to 2.7 over. We're within the margin of error here. So there's really nothing to be that concerned about. Uh, we're going to continue to tweak that and analyze the estimates. And we probably will need to come up with some alternates to give us some flexibility when we did the project in any of that. Um, Cottle's doing really well uh, schedule-wise. So the third-party review that we uh, is now complete. Um, and that meant it went back to SEP for quality assurance, quality control review. So we got some comments from them that we responded to. So we think we're really, really close to actually having full approval for the Apollo project. And it's October. And we remember that we were uh, thinking this could come as late as February or March. So we're way ahead of the game uh, with Cottle, which is excellent. So we think we're going to have final SED approval um, by November 15th at the latest. And then we're looking at bidding the project later in November and December. So it will be the first project bid that we know of for summer 2019 construction. So that's excellent timing, and the construction manager in our office has agreed that that's a good time to get it out there. So uh, Cottle's actually moving faster than anticipated, which is excellent. So it doesn't look like we have any issues with construction that is still ordered and still erected in summer 2019. We take a little bit more time with the middle school, high school, uh, sorting out the infrastructure. Uh, we're ready to go, uh, and we believe that we'll, we will have that up to SED in November. We will also ask for a third-party review, and we still think that that uh, is a much simpler project, and that should, we should still have no problem with summer 2019 construction. Uh, but we uh, obviously can't speak for SED. That's where we are. And, uh, Can I just ask one question? Next to the maker space, so what is there's a that classroom there's like a really shaded space, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
as a teacher's conference room. It can also be used as a small group instruction room. It's labeled teacher's conference. You can get A for a teacher's conference room. Okay. So teacher's conference room. <laughs> so your A for teacher's You can use it as But uh, I think that we all were very concerned about schedule. And um, I've been at it for over 30 years, and SED has been a constant issue. And I am uh, cautiously optimistic about this third party group. In the future, we will open the doors. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Russ, can I just make a quick comment? Um, I, the board may not know this, but uh, Ru Russ testified before the Federal, Federal Commission on School Safety, I want to say maybe two months ago? Yeah, it was in, um, it was in August. Yeah, it was the Department of Homeland Security uh, hearing on school safety. And I was the architect that they asked because of my national involvement and my experience with schools. So they flew me to Las Vegas on a government budget. <laughs> I was going to say, congratulations. I hope you asked them for some money because that's, all those things cost a lot of money. Great. Thank you. Russ, thank you very much. That's for thank Russ. You. Yes. Okay. Okay. We are now going to move on with the agenda to the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Pete, second Dodge. Discussion? Anything there anyone wanted, had a question about or wanted to comment on? All in favor? 
And then we're going to move on to uh, business of the board. Number one, adopt a policy. Resolve to adopt new policy 4772, graduation requirements. Motion. Dodge, second P. Discussion. I, I will just say um, this is something that's being required at, this, at the state level, but, but in practice we've always done this, which is uh, students who are, who are receiving a CDOS um, credential uh, are included with graduation ceremonies, and this is a, a practice in Tuckahoe uh, for many years. All in favor? I will also add um, Rob brought up our meeting, our last workshop meeting, and um, we did also <coughs> have a training session for our board on policy and our attorney was here to give us a training session we are committed this year to be working on our policy reviewing and um, actually we're starting right now just to prioritize um, what we want to do first because we do believe there's a lot of work to be done there so um, you will be seeing a lot more policy work on the agendas going forward okay number two accept a donation Whereas the Tuckahoe Union Free School District has been informed of a donation to be made in the amount of $100 towards recess equipment at William E. Cottle School in acknowledgment of School Board Recognition Week, and whereas the district would like to accept such donation, it is hereby resolved that the district shall accept the donation from the Tuckahoe PTA in the amount of $100. Is there a motion? Cynthia, second, Rob. Discussion? Again, thank you to the PTA. And um, that's a great use of that donation for recess. All in favor? Number three, approve service agreement. Resolve to approve student service agreement. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have to read it anymore, right? Resolve to approve student service agreement A. Is there a motion? Pete, second, Dodge, discussion. All in favor? Okay, I'm just, okay, I'm just not used to that. Okay, <laughs> number four, approve an agreement, resolve to approve an education service agreement with the ed EDUCEER for virtual education programs and courses for the period of October 10th, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 in the amount not to exceed $700. Is there a motion? Rob, second, P, discussion. If you'd like, Dr. McDonald, maybe say a few words about, about this uh program? Sure. Um, we, for many years, have used an organization called Accelerate U for students to take courses um, virtually, online, because they don't fit into their schedules. We have historically done um, Spanish that way when we have to run Spanish 1 at the high school because it's typically a middle school course for us, but some students need it, can't put it in their schedule. Um, AP Psych, we have done that way, and we have a need this year for an Italian, and we need someone to take Italian um, through and I saw it, you doesn't offer Italian. Um, so we did our research, we talked to other um, school systems and said who we can use, and Educere came out as a clear winner of another alternative, which we always like to have more than one alternative when we're looking uh, for opportunities for our kids. So this is our first foray with them, and we'll, we'll see how this relationship goes, and if we'd like okay. to offer more Great. Good you know, question. can I just, yeah, okay. oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, is that, it sounded like you mentioned Spanish, Italian, one, are those for, uh, requirements that children need to take or students need to take in order to continue on that path or is this also offered for electives this is for courses currently our current practices for courses that we offer that children can't fit into their schedule we don't really think of it as required or, or not required but it's specifically Italian it is it is a course that's needed to continue in Italian yes that the child can't fit in um, Spanish is a, Spanish one is that you have to take one year to graduate, so they use it for graduation. But AP Psych is not a required course, but we offer it. And when a child, because we're so small, our singleton classes don't always fit for students. So when they don't fit and children do have that commitment to learn it, we try to find a way for them to still be able to take the course. And that they take on their time, or is that there, that would be something like in a study hall? They can use time during the day if they have a study hall, but all of their instruction is through the teachers within the program. And all of the programs we use, use New York State certified teachers on the back end. Thank but you. our teachers do not teach them. Thank you. 
Yeah, I was just going to add because that is definitely um, one of our biggest challenges is scheduling in the high school. And when only there's one section of one course, it gets very, very challenging for our students to be able to take advantage of what we're offering. So it's a great way to do it. I guess my question would be is um, just to make sure that it's an opportunity for, you know, how, how do we find who needs it? Is it through guidance, through, through guidance, their scheduling? Yes, guidance, counselors, and scheduling. When it doesn't fit, they have conversations with the students and the parents. And, and is there a criteria to be able to, like, for all students, or do you have to have a certain um, standing? Okay. All right. Good to know. Take advantage of if it's something that they need to get on a path that they're trying to get. Okay. Great. Can they, can they take it if it's not a requirement? Well, AP Psych is not a requirement. No, as like so, I guess is that considered? So they have to take a minimum number of courses. Could they take, say, they already have a full schedule, but then they also want to take AP Psych, and that would could they do that? Gotcha. In as, a, as more than what yes. we offer, I don't know that we have done that. You have to double check with Dr. Lenahan on on the details of the history of using online. My understanding is it's been used historically here when students can't fit our course into their schedule due to scheduling conflicts, not as something beyond the day, because hmm. that's going to put a lot of stress on kids to say, oh, sure, take nine, ten classes. I don't believe that's historically been done, but we would have to check with the high school principals to confirm that. All in favor? Thank you, Ellen. Okay, we'll move on to personnel. Accept personnel recommendations. Resolve to accept personnel action items A through C as outlined below. Is there a motion? Dodge, yes. second. Key discussion. I, I will just say that. Um, Two outstanding teachers um, have submitted their retirement. Uh, Mr. Mark Deneen is one of our middle school science teachers, and uh, Ms. Peggy Velocio is, is our high school chemistry teacher. Uh, I can't say enough about, about these two individuals as far as what they've um, contributed to our school district over the years. Um, I wish them well. I, I also would like to sincerely thank them for submitting this uh, retirement so early, which, which gives us the opportunity to go out with a very, very thorough search process early because science is, is a very challenging position to fill and to find quality people. So I wish them well um, in retirement. Um, I know they have a, a good, solid school year ahead of them, and there will be opportunities for us to thank them. But, again, uh, congratulations to these two uh, individuals. All in favor? Okay. Um, Increase the teaching load. Resolve to increase the teaching load. Oh, no, I don't have to do that, right? No, that's in covered, there. Covered oh, my goodness, I'm just not used to that. Okay. All right, so that's it. Second recognition of the audience. Nobody's here for that. Okay. Can I, can I, ask, I, I missed this before, and I'm just looking it over. Could someone just think we had in the consent agenda number 13, there's transfer of funds from the estate of Angela Carapella? Is that, can someone just explain what that is? I, I could speak to that. Uh, I don't know the original dollar amount, but uh, we received a very generous donation from the Carapella family um, it, after Ms. Mrs. Carapella passed away. Um, money in her estate was donated to the school district. We accepted that, I believe, it was two years ago. And um, there were few conditions, uh, very few, but that it could be used for students, directly for students, for educational enhancement. So we have been uh, using this, Rob, for um, both SAT prep and ACT prep. I think there have been some other uses, but this evening um, the, the transfer is to uh, give us the ability to use some of those funds to support uh, prep, college prep uh, with the ACT and SAT. That prep is off-site. It's not on-site, correct? No, I believe there are two dates on-site, um, one for each. One for ACT, one for Ellen, SAT. do you know more of the details of? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you well, think that we could, could we, could we have on our next meeting a little bit more discussion about that, about the, I think it's a, it's a, um, something very unique that we do here at Tuckahoe that we offer. Um, we have been doing it for many years um, through uh, donations and grants. Um, many may not know you cannot use your budgeted tax dollars for that. So, um, but it is open um, to all, I believe, the junior class. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be really interesting to, to know the number of students that are participating um, and, and the effectiveness of it. Um, I do think that, if I recall correctly, and I know I might be 
I believe that the original donation from the Carapella estate was around $150,000. It was a very generous donation, and I believe this is the second year in a row that it, um, some of those monies are going towards um, the SAT prep. And also just to see, like, you know, how are we communicating out that this is an opportunity for the students, how are you know, and we're encouraging it, and, um, you know, I, I have said before, like, like, are we calling every home to make sure? Like, literally, I believe it's that important that a phone call can go home to say, you know, are you aware of this opportunity for your son or daughter to take advantage of? Um, because I really do think it's something very unique that we offer here and is definitely worth more attention. And if we can get a little more information at our next meeting, I think that would be great. Okay. I'll ask Dr. Linehan to Thank you, Rob, for, for noting yeah. that. We'll ask Dr. Linehan to join us. Okay. Great. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. I mean, since we have so much more time now. Okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Dodge, second Pete, all in favor. Thank you and good night.